please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Oil, oil marketing stocks. Okay, the first trade is about 0.15 higher, almost like the pre-market. So 10,530 and uh, the Sensex is up 56. Again, very modest green tick as well on the bank nifty they're all shoulder to shoulder just up about 0 0.12 0 0.15 uh, the mid caps are a shade better and that makes the advanced declines look very good at the first tick only at the first tick only gail is actually seeing a bit of uh, buying after yesterday's sell-off infosys now you can getting a bit of a pattern the it stocks are higher infosys and tc are among the green yes bank has shown its uh, shown uh, some strength uh, to the nifty asian paints is showing good colors uh, IOC is emerging, but I don't know how long that will last. Uh, Bajaj Finance, Hindalco, India Bulls Housing, all of them continuing with their short covering bounce, you will have to say. Especially stocks like, in fact, even HPCL is in the green. So that looks like a bit of short covering coming their way. <coughs> in the red, of course, Vedanta. But along with it are ITC, ONGC. Uh, no, ONGC is still not shedding those blues that it might be asked uh, to, uh, that it may be taxed on a windfall that doesn't exist. <laughs> Bharti Infratel, SBI. Hiromoto, Edison Bank, uh, BPCL is not joining the other oil majors. Titan, Lupin are some of the companies that are in the red, but not a whole lot, about half a percent. At the index level, we are still holding a 0.2 percent uptick. Oh yes, <coughs> and you know the stocks at the moment are Infosys and TCS because both those stocks have hit new highs in trade today. Of course, they've been doing that for the last many days. But today, fresh highs seen on both Infosys and TCS and uh, now uh, the gains for TCS this year have reached a whopping 35%. What a fabulous run that has been for the market leader. Um, apart from that, in the broader markets, you'd want to watch a couple of these stocks. The index itself, the mid-cap index, is mildly in the green. The market breadth is positive, 800 stocks on the advancing side. The stock of the moment is Gujarat Alkali. As I mentioned earlier, the results were very strong, 30% revenue growth, huge surge in margins, and that stock is now up almost about 11 odd percent. It has um, United Breweries for Company. That stock is up almost about 3 odd percent post its numbers. Jet Airways is seeing a bit of a bounce back right now. In fact, both United Spirits and United Breweries are doing well. Maybe the uh, street likes the fact that the management of United Spirits has uh, you know, guided for a double-digit top-line growth. So there is some amount of confidence there. Apart from that, a couple of more stocks to look at. Pidilite is coming in for some pressure after the margins were amiss. Cummins, the domestic performance was a bit disappointing this time, so that one too is down. GSK Pharma is also in the red. Uh, Cochin Shipyard is doing pretty well, uh, post the uh, positive commentary from the management. Sequence Scientific is following suit, so that stock too is up almost about 8% right now. Sudarshan Chemical and Mangalore Chemicals are also doing well. Otherwise, it's a flat opening for the market, but uh, Anuj, clearly, I mean, the the stars for now seem to be the IT names. Oh, yes, and you know, that's been the, you know, template uh, the, the template for this market, uh, Sonia, for some time. IT is the leader for this year, uh, uh, and that's been, uh, you know, our prognosis as well. But uh, granules is down another 5%, and this really has been the accident of the earnings season. Uh, uh, Ashwini, your thoughts on market opening, and uh, what's a good trade here? Clearly, uh, you know, IT has opened extremely well, and also maybe NBFCs could be looking at a good day given the way Bajaj Finance has opened. So Bajaj Finance and NIT Tech uh, possibly are the ones that you should look for upside on. But otherwise, uh, today's day will be a bit more flatter uh, than other days or like uh, uh, flatter compared to yesterday. But uh, IT seems to have gotten off the block fairly strongly. Yesterday, mid-cap IT didn't really participate. It was just, you know, Infosys, TCS. I think mid-cap IT could make up uh, today. Okay, and mid-cap IT, then what would you back, Ashwini? NIT Tech, uh, that's uh, come off the blocks very strongly. Okay, NBFC, I mean, it's not that Bajaj Finance and Finserv have done much. It's 0 0.7, and the other NBFCs are still just about languishing. Uh, GIC housing, LIC housing, uh, 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 Shri, uh, in those kind of PNB housing. Not showing too much verve at this point in time. Would you only back the Nifty NBFC, the big boys? See, US yields have fallen below 3%. <coughs> mm. So, you know, that could play in also. And also, they've corrected quite a bit. So, from here, if the market has to rally, uh, even the stocks which were correcting, even they would like to see short covering. So, that way, I would think that, uh, you know, Bajaj Finance had a bit of a correction. And from that point of view, it's a good time to get into that. 
Okay, well, the stock of the moment now is United Spirits, a 5.5% rally and huge volumes. I mean, they're picking up for the first few minutes of trade. These are good volumes on United Spirits. As I said, the management has, uh, you know, uh, spoken about how they would achieve double-digit top-line growth and they would continue to improve margins uh, to mid-high teens in the medium term. I guess that positive guidance is something that the street has liked. And they've also said how they've overcome the biggest challenges in the spirits industry, like the highway ban and the introduction of GST. So all of that is now behind them 6% higher now on United Spirits. Um, Prakash Gaba, would you trade this in the near term? United Spirits, I would say that United Spirits, yes, I would like to buy it. Maybe we can see a move on 3,500 zones or 3,525 zones. Just have a stop below 3,225. I think it's okay. Good. I think it's going up. Okay, Prakash. Thanks a lot for joining us. Have a good day. Uh, of course, we'll talk to you later. Uh, uh, Mitesh, your thoughts on market opening and anything that you like? I think, uh, Anand, uh, as you were highlighting and Ashwin is also pointing out, I think IT remains the key over here. We've been very bullish in IT since last couple of days and uh, uh, the new stock which possibly could join the upside in IT would be Hexaware. I think it's been very quiet compared to TCS, Infosys, Mindtree, etc. But I think now the intraday charts are shaping up very nicely. That about few more stocks on the buying side, I would consider Mahindra and Mahindra. I think Prakash had a call there yesterday or today, I don't remember, but the chart pattern is looking very dynamic over here. And uh, Concord is uh, something which I also like. So I think these are the stocks I like focus upon. By okay. the way, just look at Sun Pharma, and you know that's the problem. Uh, we spoke about this as well. Uh, any good news actually is used to sell into in a stock mm. like this, and uh, it's already in the red now. Uh, Ashwini, what's the the big call for the day then? Well, I would think uh, all of these uh, mid-cap IT stocks uh, they should do extremely well because. Uh, uh, the IT index has gone up, I think, about uh, 450 points. So it's high time uh, there is catch up on mid cap IT. Okay, actually, uh, there are. Uh, yeah, yes Bank is one stock we haven't spoken about. Just one quick word, uh, Mitesh, on Yes Bank. Uh, I like the stock. Uh, it's kind of corrected and come back to support levels, but uh, needs to start capturing this 344, 345 zone again. I think once it starts moving that, you will see more strength coming. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, I think you know it's trading a support level, but it might just be sideways because the indicator setup isn't very positive. All right, okay. gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thanks a lot for joining us. No, I was just saying <coughs> that you know the market may be drowning their sorrows in alcohol. I mean, look at United <laughs> Breweries, right? Five and a half percent higher today, uh, post its numbers. But thanks, guys, for joining us and taking us to the open of trade. Uh, we now welcome Saurabh Mukherjee of Ambit Capital who joins into our discussion. Saurabh, hi, good morning, good morning and thanks for joining us at a short notice. Um, uh, really appreciate it. Yeah. It's been a market which is, you know, about two halves, right? Mm. On one hand, the macros are under pressure. On the other hand, micros are improving. I mean, you are seeing a lot of companies report good earnings. But do you think uh, this, these levels could hold or are we looking at a lot of volatility for the rest of the year? No, I think I'll, I'll, I'll be the broken record again. I've been saying the market's overvalued. I think it remains overvalued. But I think more to the point, uh, you're right, the economy clearly has recovered in the last uh, seven, eight months. And with that, top line growth has become more buoyant, unquestionably. But as I think as you can see on your program itself, operating margin slippage has become the norm for many companies. I think both Q3 and Q4, as input costs pump up, as cost of money goes up, operating margins are slipping, and they're slipping especially for small and mid caps. And I think that will remain the tone and tenor for, for the current fiscal, where as GDP recovers, top line growth will come through, but operating margin pressure, I think, will become the big challenge in the coming quarters. Okay. Sort of good morning. I remember, you know, you told me this uh, but, but, but some time back mm. that the mid-cap rally, this was essentially that the cost of capital rally, mm. is at big risk this year. That's right. We've already seen some accidents. In fact, on an average, all the NSE listed stocks, uh, if you take an average, they're down about 31% mm. in mm. the mid-cap uh, mm. universe. Uh, you reckon uh, there's more to go here and there could be some more pain? I think there's, there's two two elements. One is the, the very technical factor of uh, large cap fund managers uh, rotating away from small and mid caps because of SEBI's diktat mm. that uh, large cap funds can't have more than a small portion of their portfolio in small and mid caps. The other is the cost of capital uh, point because you see uh, short term money market rates, CP and CD rates are going up. So that means the cost of uh, in investing on the margin, using margin funding, cost of investing is becoming more, more expensive and that naturally really will pull back exuberant activity in, in small and mid cap trading. Beyond that, there's the fundamental point, operating margin pressure. So I think we've seen the best of the small and mid cap rally. I think that is behind us. This is very much a year of large caps. High quality companies in, in, the, in the BSE 100 should do well as the economy recovers. Okay, uh, Saurav, good morning and thanks again. 
you know, you, you said that, yeah, you've been saying that the market's expensive, mm. but we've lost a good 8% from uh, uh, the mm -hmm. all-time highs and earnings are catching up. Mm -hmm. So now what are we, 18 times? Uh, so so I think, uh, I think the, the, we clearly will see an earnings recovery this year. I've been <coughs> saying for the last eight, nine months that the current fiscal will be the first one in five that we'll see double-digit earnings growth for the Nifty or for the Sensex. Uh, but I think even if you factor in double-digit earnings growth, Lata, even if you assume 15, 16% earnings growth, I think 30,000 30, on the Sensex, 31,000 on the Sensex is where fair value lies. I think 34,000, 35,000 still I think is, is too rich. Uh, and as we're discussing spawn and mid-caps, logically what happens is when cost of capital zips up, the riskiest part of the market pulls back. And with the lag, I think the, we will see the, the, the impact on the larger names. Okay, so 31,000 is the fair value for the Sensex. I just have to ask you about politics because I know mm. how closely you track it. Uh, after what happened with Karnataka, do you think this could be a template for 2019 where you have alliances between regional parties and mm -hmm. the Congress and, you know, uh, that could sort of lead to uh, some disappointment for the BJP? So it's, I think, premature to say whether there'll be disappointment for the BJP or not. But it, as it's as it's absolutely clear that you're, you're seeing a year, both the assembly elections, I think, in winter, in Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, and MP, and I think the general elections will largely be BJP versus everybody else, and that obviously exerts a degree of pressure on the fisc, uh, because you, you, if you know as an incumbent government that you have a tough election coming up or tough elections coming up, uh, then obviously it exerts pressure on the fisc vis-a-vis -vis the MSP, uh, where I think generous MSP hikes uh, are. On the cards over the next six months and on oil. Uh, my reckoning is on oil, the government will hold its nerve till, say, a month prior to the three elections this winter. I don't think the government will cave in just yet on oil. I think they'll hold their nerve till, say, October. And if oil hasn't, um, hasn't uh, uh, pulled back by then, I think we'll then see excise rates coming off going into the elections in winter. Okay, you know, the expectation was that the Reserve Bank will move in August mm -hmm. because by then it will know the MSP. But going by the re uh, last uh, inflation reading when core inflation went up 5.92%, mm -hmm. there are an increasing number of people who expect it as early as June 6th. Mm. Uh, will that materially change cost of capital or is it already bad and so it won't have an impact on markets? So till, um, till say, a month ago, I was thinking that we'll see two rate hikes this year. Mm. Uh, increasingly, as I watch oil, my re views becoming, we'll see three rate hikes this year. Uh, I'd been of the view for a while that July, June, July is when we see the rate hike cycle begin. And I think, and I think that's highly likely to happen. You're clearly seeing economic pickup and as a result core inflation is pumping through very strongly so leaving aside oil you're already seeing core inflation come through as the economy picks up so i think at least two more likely three rate hikes this year should be the default expectation which in turn has a bearing on small and mid caps as soon as you raise the cost of money uh, riskier stocks will pull back more okay so but what, the what, so what should the is already at 7.9 that's already pricing mm -hmm. in two or three rates. That's right. So what my point <coughs> is, is this going to have an impact on markets? Is not capital already costly? Mm -hmm. Or do you think it will go to eight, eight yeah. quarter or something? I think I think that's the, short, the shorter end of the market, in the CP and CD. In CP mm -hmm. and CD, I think rates have gone up 125 bips in the last uh, yeah. six, seven Year months. Year to date, it's risen from 7.5 to 8.8. .8. Right. So so I think the shorter end, I think, carries on, carries on tightening. Because remember, it's not just the FISC. It's also uh, uh, a lack of clarity on on GST revenues means that the government is giving less to the states. The states are borrowing heavily in the bond market, which is again crowding out private sector borrowing. So overall, we do have a, a crush of borrowing in the money market, which is pushing rates up. And that has a bearing on, on small and mid caps and also on, mm -hmm. uh, on housing finance companies and NBFCs. So, so what should investors do this year, uh, Saurabh? There's a set of 30 stocks which is uh, outperforming and which is actually masking a lot of, you know, uh, beneath mm -hmm. the surface sort of action. Uh, you know, there's a Bajaj Finance, of course, there's an Infosys, TCS, couple of consumption names which are making new highs. Uh, uh, but most of these names are now above median valuation and in certain cases above their highest valuation. So, uh, a bit of a conundrum here. Uh. I think, I think we've got, you know, we've discussed this on the program before, I think you've got three broad baskets that you can look at. One is CASA, CASA funded banks, banks with genuinely strong mm -hmm. CASA franchises, excluding the PSU banks because their cost of money stays affordable and they benefit from the recovery. Uh, now, I know some of the better private sector banks who uh, have strong CASA franchises are expensive, but there are other... Uh, uh, banks with CASA franchises in the private sector still trading at two, two and a half times price to book. Second, I would say look at metals and mining. It's a sector where new capacity simply will not come on stream for three, four years. Uh, the, as the economy picks up, demand is picking up. And I think both in ferrous and non-ferrous, we've got sort of quasi 
oligopolistic setups, right, in, uh, in, yes. in metals and mining. And the third area I would say is look at exchange rate plays. The rupee is under pressure. Difficult to see why the pressure in the rupee should abate in the near term. And, and, uh, and IT and pharma companies benefit from a, from a cheaper rupee. Okay, I just have one last question. I know you have to run, but I have to ask you, what do you do with some of these companies that have been beaten down, but the managements are trying to put the... I know you have to run, but I have to ask you, what do you do with some of these companies that have been beaten down, but the managements are trying to put the house in order? Mm. Tata Motors, for example, where they have a new aggressive management on board. Uh, do you... I think look, the, the, the template I've used for turnaround plays in the past is the, the underlying franchise has to be superb. Uh, you have to have a great brand uh, distribution. Uh, and, and, and if on top of a, uh, a great underlying franchise, you bring in a new management team, uh, five out of ten times it works in our country. Uh, so it's worked with a prominent truck company, it's worked with a prominent biscuit company. Uh, so so I, I don't see why it shouldn't, shouldn't work for this. But you do need the underlying franchise to be strong and you need a committed and brand new management team who's willing to completely discard the ways of the old one. Okay. Saurabh, thank you very much My for pleasure. dropping in today and for making this unscheduled stop. Thank you. Well, Midcap action is now picking up a couple of stocks. NCC, after yesterday's big rally, is having a good follow-through. And also keep an eye on comments. Uh, after opening lower, that stock is trying to recover a bit. Uh, uh, let's uh, bring in Lor Lawrence Balenko of CLSA now in this conversation. Lawrence, good morning. Thanks a lot for joining us. Uh, on the on the Nifty, uh, what's your sense? Do you think the, the market has made a lower top at around... 10,900 or would it be too premature? I think in the short term we have and, and we've seen sort of a, a correction across uh, global markets uh, but we're unlikely to retest uh, the lows that we made uh, in March and uh, we should start to find support around the 200 day moving average uh, which is around the, the 10,300, 10,400 area. Um, so I think that should then set up for another move to the upside and we're still carrying the 12,000 upside target from uh, the breakout that we saw in uh, 2017. Lawrence, uh, uh, good morning. Thanks for joining us. Well, uh, first things first, uh, the double whammy we have suffered is the rising dollar index and the rising crude. Can you draw us the chart of both these, uh, DXY and uh, crude, Brent? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, if you look at the Brent chart, the, the key thing was the breakout from the 2016-17 trading range that gave us an upside target of 76.40, which we obviously met and, and have recently surpassed. The, the one thing that we are flagging uh, on the price action is our momentum indicators have failed to confirm uh, this past week's uh, highs. So that suggests that the, the uptrend is mature and, and vulnerable to reversal. What you're likely to see in oil is set up a higher trading range uh, where around $80 will be the top end of the range and 65 the bottom end. But in the near term, we should pull back. Um, on on the, the dollar side, and I'll actually look at the Indian rupee because it's quite interesting that, uh, you know, we broke out in April when we cleared the 66, 65 area. Mm. That gave us an upside target of 69, and, and we're pretty much within striking distance of that upside target. It's basically the 2016 and 15 highs, okay. uh, and that should limit the, the, the upside, sure. I think, in the uh, rupee. Up. Okay, so 65 to 80 dollars a barrel is the range for crude, and 12,000 is the uh, target for the Nifty. So this 12,000 target on the Nifty is by the end of 2018. Yeah, we should see that within 2018 trading year. Okay, within 2018 trading year. I wanted to ask you, you don't see any major correction in the global markets uh, for the rest of the year, led by, say, the big moves that we're seeing in the dollar as well as in uh, global bond deals? So if you look at bond deals again, you've hesitated at the, the big resistance area, which is at 3 to 3.05%. 3 Momentum slowed. Positioning from speculator is uh, crowded net short, so we don't think we get a sustained break above that level. And as with the Indian rupee, the, the dollar move does look fatigued and, and we're likely to pull back there. And if you look at lead markets uh, like the U.S., um, they've broken out of uh, trading ranges that you've had since January. Um, the Russell 2000 has already made new highs. So I think selectively uh, you, you've got markets uh, set up to, to make new highs uh, for the year, and, and that should keep the nifty uptrend intact uh, and to make new highs. I mean, there, there are some global markets that remain weak, but I think selective markets and the lead markets still make new highs for the year. Okay, so, so Lawrence, in, in emerging market, uh, where would you put India in terms of uh, the pecking order among the other big markets that you track? 
Yeah, unfortunately, India is a relative underperformer, and that's been because of uh, the weakness uh, in the currency. So, uh, you know, the key outperformer is China uh, at this stage. That's where you're getting the relative outperformance. And where you've seen price action similar to the U.S. consolidating in a sideways trading range uh, since those January highs. So China remains the lead uh, EM market uh, at the end of the day, and uh, India, unfortunately, is, is an underperformer. Mm -hmm. okay. Well, 12,000 is still good enough, even if it is an underperformer. Okay. Uh, Lawrence, yeah. uh, do you separately track the Nifty Bank as well? Will that be do better than the Nifty, you think? Yes, yeah, so it's been the key driver to the 2017 breakout, and it's been a, a sort of a key overweight uh, sector for, for us from the technical side since we broke out of uh, the trading range in 2015. And on a longer-term basis, it's still... Uh, where we've got an upside target of 31,000 and, and we're sitting around the 26,000 area. Uh, on one of the positives that you've seen uh, over the past um, two months has been the stability in the banks index and, and the, uh, the ability to recapture the 25,000 area. So I think it's still a key overweight sector uh, for the market. And, and then obviously the momentum sector that you've had and, and which we've highlighted before has been the tech sector. Uh, which with uh, currency weakness has seen that being the momentum sector over the past six months. But uh, the, the banks still remain the leadership sector on a longer-term basis. Okay, mm -hmm. so the target for the longer term in the bank nifty is 31,000. Uh, that, I assume, yeah. is by the end of 2018 as well? Yeah, I think, I think you've got to give that uh, target uh, because of the, the magnitude of move a bit more time, but uh, the, the uptrend is there and, and one that you definitely still want to be overweight uh, financials or the banks within the uh, Indian market uh, composition. You did say, you did briefly mention your view on the tech sector, but I want to, uh, you to throw a little more colour on that because as we speak, uh, stocks like Infosys, TCS are hitting new highs. For someone who's perhaps missed out on this rally there, is it still worth... Uh, a go in? Well, I think, uh, I think you would want to look at Infosys as the laggard, right? So Tata Consulting has been the leader, uh, broken out of a three-year trading range. But if you look at Infosys, that's just emerging from its uh, multi-year trading range. And you've also got uh, a six-month consolidation pattern that uh, you've broken out from. So for me, within the tech space right now, I think uh, Infosys is a laggard, and that's the one to, uh, to look at. All right, Lawrence Belanco, it's always a pleasure having you with us. Thank you very much for joining us. Okay, so uh, the point uh, Lawrence is making is uh, you don't expect uh, too much of negativity in the mm. nifty. Uh, 10,300, 400 could be a point from which the index may bounce back and we could take 12,000 with uh, both. both hands and more. Both hands, both legs, right? <laughs> 12,000 is something that he's hoping uh, the nifty could see by the end.